Hi guys! Okay, so today's video is about creating a color palette. Specifically for shoes, but you can pretty much use this advice for almost anything. Like if you're a clothing designer, or even if you want to have a kind of a color palette, standard color palette for your closet. So it can be used a lot of different ways. Um, but I'm kind of gearing it a little bit more towards shoes, so take what you will. Okay, so when I create a color palette, I think that the amount of colors depends on how big your collection is. So the larger the collection, in theory, the larger the color palette. Because if you have five colors and you have a hundred shoes, everything could start looking the same and you might lose some, some orders because everything starts looking the same and they just compare the 20 nude shoes you have to each other instead of thinking that there's room for, for many different options. So the more shoes you have in your collection, the more colors you would need. So let's just say, I'll base this idea off of a collection of maybe, let's say 30 styles. Um, so 30 styles, what I would do is I would probably make a color palette of about eight colors. That way you have enough variation, but it all is kind of consistent with each other. Um, what I like to do is for a color palette, I like to keep it so there's probably at least half are neutrals because the way the commercial fashion is, um, neutrals are the ones that sell because people can wear them with more things. So what we call neutrals are anywhere from black, navy, um, taupe, nude. For white, it depends. White I would call more like a fashion color these days because um, because it's more trendy right now. Um, so black, navy, taupe, nude, um, sometimes cognac is, I would say that it is most of the time, like a tan cognac kind of color. Um, yeah, I think, and gray. Gray is pretty neutral as well. It also depends on the season. If you're going into fall, as we are, um, Neutrals for fall are a little bit different than what neutrals are considered for spring. So fall, winter, neutrals can be anything from black, navy, wine, taupe, gray, cognac or brown. Those would be your neutrals for fall. So if we were, let's say we're making a fall collection of 30 styles and we have the color palette is eight colors. So I would make four colors neutrals. So I would do, let's say, black, wine, dark taupe, and let's say navy, just to mix it up a little bit. You want the colors to be different enough from each other, um, otherwise there's no point in having the two colors, especially with such a limited color palette. So, for example, um, sorry my cat's looking at me. <laughs> Put a picture. Hold on, let me take a picture. Oh, he's coming over. Hi. Hey, crazy. Okay. If I were to have a taupe and also a gray, and they were very, very similar, there's really not a point in a limited color palette to have both. Now, as I said before, if you have a hundred styles and you have like a much larger color palette, like maybe you have 12 or 15 colors, then it's okay to have gray versus taupe um, because you can make them different enough. Like maybe you can make the taupe a little light, maybe you can make the gray like a charcoal gray, so a little bit darker. So that they're different enough that it makes sense that the buyer would buy both. There's a possibility of it. So for the neutrals, I chose things that were quite different from each other. Black, wine, navy, and like a dark taupe. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now for the other four colors, it really depends. Um, I like to have at least two pop colors, especially in a color palette where it's about eight colors, eight to ten colors. I like to have at least two that are pop, very trendy colors. Otherwise, all the collections start looking the same between fall 2018, fall 2019, fall 2020. If they're all roughly the same color palette of all classics, then it kind of gets a little boring. I mean, that's what trends are there for, right? To like liven things up a little bit. So, like this season and a little bit last season, it was all about leopard print, zebra print. So, it depends on the colors of those. Like, you can have a zebra print that's in cognac base with black zebra stripes, or you could have it with white base with black stripes, like true zebra. <laughs> Um, or if you wanted a leopard print, I mean, leopard print, you can find in any color imaginable. You can find it, um, white on black, you can find a black spots on, like, a taupe, or you can find black spots on, like, a tan color, which is the more traditional leopard print. Um, yeah. So it really depends. Um, depends on the trends, it depends on the season, it depends on the rest of your color palette. You want to make sure all the colors kind of flow together and that they look fairly cohesive. Um, but again, with those trend colors, that's a little place where you can have more fun and kind of veer off a little bit. Pop colors are used very sparingly. So if you have a collection that's 30 styles and maybe like three or four colors per style, I would do, I would probably maybe do five styles where one of the colors is a pop color. So like let's say white would be the white would be a pop color for fall as it was like a couple of years ago. So if white's the pop color, I would only use it in five styles. If red was the pop color, like bright red, I would use it in a different five styles. I wouldn't make a white and a red one in the same style, if that makes any sense. So you want to spread out your pop colors. You also want to make sure that it's not all neutrals. Um, and then for the other two colors, it can be something that's not quite trendy, but it's something that kind of wipes it up a little bit. I wouldn't say it's a pop color. It still can be fairly classic, but, um, but it kind of like pops a little bit. So in the sense of fall, you could do like kind of like a mid blue or violet or emerald green. So these aren't really classics. They're not really neutrals. They're not really quite pop colors. They could be. Depends on the season. But they're more like understandable but still kind of fashion colors. So I kind of like to mix up the palette so it has 50% neutrals, 25% pop, 25% like fashion, but not super crazy colors. Yeah. So I hope that helps. I'll put a few color palettes that I really think embody what I'm saying right now. And, um, you guys let me know if you have any questions. So you want to mix between darks and lights, you want to mix between neutrals and pops, you want to mix it up a little bit but still make sure it kind of looks cohesive and that the colors work really well together because if you have four shoes of the same style, so you have a ballet flat plane, let's say, and you have the four colors together on a shelf, you want to make sure that those colors look really nice together. So what I'll do is I'll take the color and I'll put it against each color and I'll kind of like run it around all the colors to make sure that it works with all of them. So I hope that was clear and I hope it helps you out a little bit. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like this video and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.